My name is Ana Valdez. I am Deborah Santana. My name is Bob Ross. My name is Paulo Saki. I'm Heather Bernikoff. My name is Susan Lowenberg. Shirley Pooler Kinsey. I'm Virgil Roberts. Armin Castellano. My name is Bernard Kinsey. My name is Joyce Neustadt, and I am a philanthropist. And I am a philanthropist. And I am a philanthropist. And I'm a philanthropist. And I'm a philanthropist. And I'm a philanthropist. It's very important that donors from diverse communities be given greater visibility and that they themselves step forward and take leadership and demand that kind of visibility because it's by example, it's by the stories of individual donors, the commitments they're making to their communities. That's what's really going to change people's perception of diverse communities from only grant seekers to people who are giving and creating the future. What some people don't know is that I grew up in Mexico City in a privileged home and there were many treats to it, but I always knew there was something wrong. The culture of differences between the haves and the have-nots was very painful. My folks were sharecroppers in Texas, so neither my mother nor my father finished elementary school. I didn't know how to go from where I was to college and a philanthropic organization, they helped me. I see every day hundreds of young people that don't know how to go from where they are to where they should be. And so I see in a lot of young people, I see me. Being raised as a biracial child, someone who was looked at oddly in society if I was walking with my parents, I learned how to cope with being different. And people who are in need in the world often feel very different. They feel marginalized. So I think growing up biracial gave me great empathy and great oneness with people who are different, which really we all are. In our Jewish household, we had a little uh, sadaka box that we filled with coins and it was just part of, part of my upbringing, really. Ever since I was a child, I, that's how I was raised. You give and you take and you create a balance. The American Indian community has always been a community of givers. It's a deep, fundamental cultural belief system about creating balance. My husband, Alcario, and I were very active in our community. We served on several nonprofit boards, we were volunteers, we give what little money we could. Well, the most marvelous thing happened on June 23rd, 2001. My husband won the lottery. Within 20 minutes after we had found out we had won, I was writing a list of the organizations that we were going to share the money with. <laughs> we came to California from Florida with $26 in a job. And um, no car. And no car 44 years ago. And literally made a life. Every person that has made a lot of money realize that making the money, it's just the beginning. So the question really is, how can we help more people? How can we share this? How can we allow what we've done to help other people go through that door. This is a quote from Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm our world. For me and my family, it comes from a perspective of wh whom are we in danger of leaving behind? in terms of the promise of America. I'm interested in education. I'm interested in immigrant parents. I'm interested in redevelopment in poor communities. Women are marginalized. We are still not equal citizens anywhere in the world, even in America. So I, I really want to support women in bringing up the level of what we offer to the world and also what we offer to ourselves. There's a huge gap and there's a huge misunderstanding about the needs of the Asian ethnic communities. I think there needs to be more funding and more opportunities for more recent immigrants and language issues, legal issues, health issues.
in the LBGT community. The need is huge. We need jobs. We also need to be able to put food on the table and send our children to school. So it, it's a similar need as everyone else in this country, um, but uh, we, we don't have all the same rights. The amount of giving to the Latino community in particular has remained static at 1% over the last decade, although the population has increased. It's amazing the kind of um, poverty that folks are facing in the American Indian community. Tribal lands account for 20% of the lower 48 states. So it's our next generation that's going to be stewards of that land. And wouldn't it be a great investment to work with those communities to build that capacity? We need to look at our history and our culture as a part of the fabric of this nation. So it's not Japanese American history or Chinese or Korean. This is American history that needs to be preserved. Well, one of the best things we've done is share our collection of African American art and historical documents. We call it where art and history intersect. And what we've been able to do and share with 2.7 million people, 70,000 young kids, school-age kids, are these remarkable stories of African Americans who died alone and without any recognition of the accomplishments and the contribution they made to this country. So what we decided that we would do simply is that we're going to give them a personality, a voice, and a name. If there's one kid out there in the Midwest or in some small community who you know feels completely alone, if they can see that there are possibilities, that there is a bigger world out there, they're not alone. They can get married, they can have children, they can have the life they want, whatever it may be. That will, that's enough for me. Diversity of experience is what makes this field of philanthropy great. And in this country, we need those perspectives and ideas more than ever. The truth is that America is very diverse, as is the community I live in, San Jose. But you walk into some institutions and uh, uh, the diversity is not there. We want to see people that look like us reflected in those institutions. I want to show the brown face of philanthropy. And we're here, we're here to give, and we're here to stay. And we're increasing in great numbers. By 2050, maybe sooner, the majority of Americans will not be white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Our society is still thinking in terms of those are the people in power. Those are the only people who have power and who own the world. There's a disconnect between our institutions and our, and our population. I'm involved with a lot of boards. People who are thoughtful about our world recognize that if you don't know a community, you don't really understand its needs. And oftentimes the, the needs that people see and prescribe because they think that's the right thing, it's not what the community needs. I participate in boards that are very mainstream. I learn from mainstream organizations. I benefit from their experience and their funds. And I feel like I have the privilege to guide them as to how to use that money in those underprivileged communities that they want to serve by giving them my expertise being part of it. When you bring in somebody who's been marginalized by society, women, people with disabilities, someone gay or transgender, they see the world a little bit differently. If you don't have people who have the experience around the table, you lose a richness of conversation and a perspective that really helps you to become more effective. We're asking people to see these diverse experiences and backgrounds as, as gifts, unique gifts that we bring to these leadership roles because that's precisely what this field needs. We want to see it because philanthropy itself understands it is the right thing to do, but more powerfully, it's the smart thing to do. philanthropy should be leading the way around issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And D5 is really going to bring the field of philanthropy forward rapidly. I'm excited about the D5 initiative, making sure that we have a vibrant philanthropic sector that is representative of all of America. It's not now.
I am honored and thrilled to be part of a community of people who are concerned with and committed to sharing their wealth, sharing their goodness, and giving back to help others. I see it more as a privilege. I'm being allowed to make a difference. If what D5 is doing here, if it can open up some of these closed doors now, I think it would be just amazing. Until all of our institutions are really celebrating diversity, not tolerating diversity, but celebrating right. diversity, we will still have a lot of work ahead of us. We believe that this uh, evolving experiment in the United States of America known as democracy uh, is continues to be to be worth investing in and and the engine for that idea is philanthropy and so if you believe in the notion that a diverse democratic society can work then you ought to believe that a diverse inclusive philanthropic sector has got to be the engine that keeps that idea alive.